thank you very much, Dr. Cocker. So I am very pleased to be here with you in New Orleans and to have the opportunity to present uh, the experience we have on fibrinolysis, especially uh, in developing assays and doing some method validation. But you know, fibrinolysis now has been recognized this past decade as being a major function in many different uh, body, um, uh, body functions. So, and so I will extend from intravascular fibrinolysis to all the different implications of extravascular fibrinolysis in brain, in fertility and fecundation, uh, in um, so some cell remodeling and in cancer. So this slide shows the, uh, present, the um, objectives of this presentation with the different implications of fibrinolysis. I will also focus on uh, the different factors which are involved in fibrinolysis. So we're just here. And I will finish by uh, presenting the methods available for laboratory testing and their significance. So what is fibrinolysis? So fibrinolysis is a major function which is involved in many biological processes and which this function can kill. But it is difficult to evaluate but because it kills silently. And you know, it is very difficult to understand why uh, this, uh, um, this major function has been impaired. And it has a major role in intravascular clot dissolution, but it is delayed. And also an important role in extravascular matrix degradation, brain and neurological functions, and development of cancer, metastasis, and cancer progression. Okay, thank you. It's better. So this next slide summarizes the fibrinolytic function. So it is a key system in life, as I explained it, and probably its implication is still under-evaluated with physical and pathological important implications. It is an important but occult function in regulating many biological functions in life. There are now uh, some uh, diagnostic analytes which can be measured and probably you are familiar with measuring TPA, PI1, urokinase, plasminogen activator and its receptor using mainly uh, ELISA methods but uh, the major question is what is the significance and the pronostic value of these different analytes in clinical practice. Now there are also other fibrinolysis factors which are being recognized for having diagnostic value. For example, uh, TAFI, the thrombin activatable fibrinolysis inhibitor, PI2 in pregnancy, the matrix metalloproteinase and their inhibitors, TIMPs, neuroserpine in nerves and brain, which is also a major inhibitor of, of TPA, annexin 2 which focuses TPA activity in extravascular uh, activities, and especially in nerves, axons, and brain, and the um, low-density lipoprotein receptor-related protein, which in contrast uh, helps to clear TPA and to reduce its activity. So this slide summarizes these uh, ubiquitous functions of uh, fibrinolysis in brain, in cancer, in thrombosis and uh, recanalization of vessels, fertility and cell remodeling. And the two major uh, proteins involved in fibrinolysis are TPA, which is the activator of fibrinolysis, intravascular but also extravascular, and its uh, inhibitor, PI1, and these proteins present very important um, variations in vivo. And uh, so they can have activities in the intravascular compartment and in the extravascular, and TPA initiates clot dissolution and uh, PI1 regulates the importance of fibrinolysis. And the other proteins are present in blood at a rather constant concentration and they contribute uh, to set up the fibrinolysis process. In the extravascular compartment, there is a very important role of urokinase plasminogen activator and its receptor, but uh, TPA has also a very important function in liver 
axons and brain. So uh, what uh, we uh, have to uh, remember is that uh, fibrinolysis is difficult to observe because it has a delayed activity. And I would like to uh, remember this paper from Gurevich and Panol from Boston, and you know that they have spent a lot of work in working in fibrinolysis and its mechanisms, and especially on urokinase and pro urokinase And uh, they reported that when you let a test tube with clotted blood on the bench, you can notice a spontaneous clot, clot dissolution, but only after a lag time of five, six, seven, up to ten days or more. And if you soak in plasma uh, a fibrin clot or a platelet poor plasma, then uh, the, the lag time is different. It is shorter with the fibrin clot than with a plasma clot. And when you soak uh, these, uh, these clots in platelet poor plasma or in platelet rich plasma, you can see that uh, clot dissolution is slightly enhanced in uh, platelet rich plasma. And this study shows that uh, this spontaneous and delayed dissolution is TPA mediated and endogenous TPA appears to be very resistant to inhibition by contrast to exogenous TPA which is introduced in plasma and uh, which has a very short half-life. And uh, this spontaneous clot dissolution was abolished by TPA antibody, not by UPA antibody. Nevertheless, urokinase plasminogen activator was able to uh, lower the lag time, especially only in platelet-rich plasma, and the shortening was abolished by the antibody to UPA. And therefore, TPA and UPA work in a strong energy, which means that one plus one makes much more than two. And uh, probably the spontaneous clot dissolution which occurs with time can reflect the body's fibrinolytic potential, even if uh, uh, only um, some uh, remaining activities are present in these uh, test plasma.